What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jerry Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a lot of stuff in the WB has come out, Brian. A little tidbits here and there. One thing in particular, Brian, that we've sort of been iffy about has been the Joker 2 trailer. We'll talk about Peacemaker as well and also some Superman uh, news. But the Joker 2 trailer, Brian, this trailer was brilliant. Brilliant in that off jump, they told you what the music was sort of gonna, was what, what the role of music would be. So I was like, nice, thank you. And then I was already interested. I was already interested after that. But there were certain things in this trailer, Brian, that everybody was sort of focusing on and how that end shot with the, the the lipstick on the glass and him smiling. That was that was just that was just that's why I said brilliant. Todd Phillips is a genius. The musical aspect of it, Brian, does it make more sense now? Yeah, of course. I mean, I think I think um we heard the rumors like this entire movie was a musical you kind of were like eh, that's probably not right but then obviously you don't hire lady gaga unless <laughs> you intend to have her sing at some yeah, point yeah. i would hope um so yeah no i think it makes sense i think this trailer did exactly what it's supposed to do we can debate the merits of this entire franchise i'm happy to have that conversation because there's a valid conversation that says this should never have existed in the first place yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But it does. Phenomenally successful, most successful R-rated movie of all time. And whatever what were the else numbers you want, again? Oh, well, the original one is a $30 million budget and was $1.1 billion <laughs> global box. <laughs> now that That's crazy. The sequel might have to do a billion dollars because supposedly the budget's like $200 million on this. But what, what the trailer underscores to me is Todd Phillips has a vision and a perspective for what he wants to tell. Whether you like it or not, he is committed to that. Yeah. And he sees this as the evolution of the Arthur Fleck descent into madness. But in a way that makes him weirdly the protagonist of this version of the telling, right? That's kind of the essence of Joker 1, which... I still maintain as a tough watch. I have not been able to watch that movie again, start to finish, even though I will watch little scenes. I've not wanted to sit down and watch the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like I'm going to feel that way about this movie too. Mm -hmm. There are probably going to be scenes, as you say, that are like chilling scenes that are amusing scenes that are going to showcase the talent of Joaquin and, and Lady Gaga. But I have a feeling like after I see this once in the theaters, I'm going to be like, I'm good. I don't, I don't need to rewatch that. And like, if it's on an airplane, I'm not picking that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? But, but it is, the trailer's tight. It's like tight and chaotic, right? It like, it was just exactly what you would expect the Joker to be. And, and the engagement, the, you know, the view count, social media reaction, it's off the charts, right? This trailer has been bigger than anything Barbie related last year. So, you know, Warner Brothers is likely, almost certainly looking at a massive hit again yeah they built into this trailer what they did with the announcement of the first movie of the joker Brian, which is curiosity yeah if you can build curiosity into something and people want to see go see it regardless of whether they like it or not they're gonna go check it out i probably may not go to the theaters to watch it brian maybe i don't know i don't know but uh, there's certainly a bunch of people that are going to go see this movie. Even as much as ultimately, like if they tried to make three, four or five, if they try to make five of these things, there is a point at which you're going to say, where's Batman? I, <laughs> I do think that's coming, right? Like we're probably like, maybe there's one more of these that could get out before you're kind of like, all right, like I know where this has to go. Mm, yeah. But in this window that they're operating in, it's kind of perfect as its own thing that is not connected to the broader universe because like i don't know that i would want to see joaquin's take if this was some broader justice league umbrella that they're trying to build i think it works better that he's kind of just off doing his own thing i don't foresee a, a, a batman appearance if they ever continue I, and then i'm sure people will be like all right already but i mean they, they keep reminding you right i mean they, they always make take 
great pains to remind you of like, oh, here's Arkham. Here's the, like all yeah, these yeah, Batman yeah, yeah, landmarks, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? So they are deliberately telling you this is still Batman's world, even if he's not. Exactly. Yet. But so. a, a world without any hints of him or his presence is for me not a world I'm interested in seeing, quite honestly. I mean, the only way I could see it work in this is, is really like, I don't think it would work as well. Because I think the Joker is a little too sadistic, ultimately, for this to pay off. But it would be like what I was pitching as a Doctor Doom perspective movie, where you make the Fantastic Four the antagonist to him. Could you make a Joker, could you make a Batman movie where Joker's perspective is the one you live from, and you somehow actually wind up torn between knowing you're supposed to root for Batman to stop him, but actually almost wanting the Joker to win? That's the only way I think you could attempt it. And that's tough. But I just think that Joker's, at the end of the day, he's too evil, push comes to shove, yeah. for me to really buy into the sympathy aspect of what he's doing. That, that's kind of my struggle with it. I was hoping, Brian, to see something to the effect with the Gotham series show that, uh, that, uh, that, that was being I don't know, talked about or developed with Matt Reeves and stuff, where you see the perspective possibly from Jim Gordon and every once in a while, you see Batman. And you see him doing his thing. You see him talking. You don't necessarily have to see Batman in action. We don't have to see Batman's cave. It could be all about Gordon and his experience through his personal, through his perspective. And we see Batman through him. That, to me, is interesting. Because that relationship is, 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 very, is very important as well. Well, that is, I mean, like I said, that's where you could push Batman more toward the of being over the line yeah. because if you had a more humanitarian viewpoint of what was happening except bruce wayne's a step ahead and like you know you're getting to the crime scene and like you, you're living in this perspective of like all right we want to apprehend these guys we have this sting set up this trap you get there and like batman's broken three legs and like hung up a bunch of criminals and got like you might all of a sudden start to be like is this guy really a hero? Like, do I really want this guy patrolling the street? Like, that's the idea. Like, you'd have to kind of push Batman toward that vilified role, you yeah, know? That's, that, that's an intriguing show right there. Where you see Bruce Wayne, but you barely see Batman. That, right. That. And when you do, and when you do, you're almost horrified by how he actually fights crime. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No Jim report, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> um, our billion dollar ideas right? yeah yo I'm telling you I want to do a show Brian, where we have billion dollar ideas Peacemaker season 2 they're in the works me personally Brian I'll probably the last time I watched it I watched it while I was uh, doing Peloton I'll probably continue doing the same thing what do you expect from season 2 more the same or something more this kind of came out of nowhere because there's been a lot you know this this show has its fans uh, I, I i would not count myself as one of them uh i didn't particularly i just i don't particularly vibe with like this this is the part of james gunn's humor that like i'm not i'm in and out of i get taken out of it i have moments where i'm like ah that is clever and funny and then i struggle with it and i yeah. struggle with this series yeah. but a lot of people do like it so he's gotten a lot of questions on socials about are they going to do it and he played very coy and then all of a sudden announced day one of filming is underway. My concern, as with all things, you know, because I'm biased, is like all I want is a tremendous Superman movie. <laughs> and I view stuff like this as a potential distraction. <laughs> so <laughs> that's my biggest concern. <laughs> I realize not everyone feels that way, but that's how I feel about it. I'm like, why? Why couldn't we just wait until Superman Legacy was in the can and on the big screen and then we can go do this stuff again? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, James yeah. Gunn's got to do it, man. Creature Commandos, this type of stuff. He, he, has to, he has to have his hands in those goofy cookie jars. Because Brian, there is no other, <clears throat> there is no other uh, scenario where he gets the opportunity to do something like this. So he has to do whatever it is that he possibly can. Yeah, because he might not get the chance. Out. <laughs> before <laughs> the cash runs out, that's... before before, before that stuff comes into his house, where's the keys at? <laughs> and walks out. You know what I'm that's saying? Right. Some Superman stuff, Brian. What are they? Just little stuff. Um, one is like on, on Superman Legacy, you know, stuff about the villains got carried away to the point where James Gunn put a quash to it and said, you know, the main villain of this is Lex. But I think one of the things that's interesting is people are reading into like main villain, right? Like that implies other 
And like, but then he said something else, the effect of like every speaking part in this movie has now been cast. So now people are trying to figure out like, well, what does that mean if there's a second villain already on the cast sheet? Uh, I, I just, people are a little bit overboard like, with this. It's <laughs> like, I mean, honestly, if he is trying to tell like a very throwback traditionalist, you know, kind of all American type Superman story, then you know, then yeah, probably I would say Lex being the main villain makes sense. And then I would be on the lookout for Brainiac as some sort of Easter egg plant at the end. That kind of would be my yes. very simple, basic, can work really well pitch. Yes. Brian, what did he say? He said, wouldn't you want to know? Uh, w- would you want to know the, 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 the story? The yeah. Movie He's like, basically, before? why do you want it spoiled? Why don't, why do you actually want to know all this stuff now? Yeah, exactly, yo. Like, why? Yo, let the movie come out. Be surprised, yo. You want to taste raw chicken or you want to, you want, or you want to taste the end? Me finishing it. What? what? Yeah. Let me cook and I'll give you the result. You know, you know, you're going to get chicken. (laughs) Let me cook it. You know, (laughs) people are so like, people are so obsessed with the suit too. And I'm like. Yeah, I want to see the suit. I'm interested in that. But you know when I want to see the suit? I want to see the suit in the, in the first trailer when it's like it, the shot is edited and it looks the way he wants it to look and he presents you that first look the way he wants you to see it. I don't want to see, like, I don't want to see the suit just like hung up on a coat hanger. That doesn't interest me. I can go to Party City and see that. And do one myself, right? Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, the other Superman news, which I thought was very cool, and I'm actually very excited about this, is they announced a tribute documentary to Christopher Reeve uh, will be coming out this fall with the blessing of his family. And I guess some of his surviving family members are going to appear in it. And I think it's, I think, I do think it's notable, right? Because they're basically trying to put Superman back in the conscious and you and really like leveraging the legacy of Christopher Reeve to do that. That's a, in some ways, a risk because you're actually bringing his greatness in the role right in front of everyone a few months before you give them your new take on on the character. But I'm very excited to see this and I thought it was a very cool. So technically the first movie, the DC movie that you're going to see is actually a, a, a tribute documentary to Christopher Reeve. Yeah, man, despite what anyone else may say, Christopher Reeve is the best Superman. Ever. I don't care what you say. You can say Henry Cavill, whatever, whatever. I don't, <laughs> don't want to hear it. It's almost like art imitated life. Like he's he was constructed to be the character in the comics more than like the character in the comics was ever constructed. It's it's bizarre. I just don't think anyone's ever going to top that. Very, S- and the essence of Superman or the essence of a character. The essence of the duality of the character, both sides of it. Yes, yes, yes. Something that we're waiting for still with Batman, right? And Richardson, he can do it. He's the best. He can do it. I know he can do it. <laughs> One other character that reminded me that sort of, even though we, I had never seen him in a, a role like this before or this character before, but... Rest in peace, Ray Stevenson. He was like sort of that that he he embodied what that character was meant to. You know what I'm saying? And he looked like he was drawn out of a comic book. He was he, he also sort of gave you that that like he owned that character. And so did Christopher Reeve. Uh and there was something I saw something on Instagram, and I think we may see it in the documentary where he talks about who Superman is and what Superman is all about for him, anyway. And he expressed this, expressed it so eloquently that uh, I believe James Gunn is 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 uh, aiming for that same sentiment and feeling that you that you got when anyone sees that that movie superman cuz it still gives you chills when you see it for the first time. Yeah, I'm telling you I I I know I know the flash is a very forgettable movie but like that moment when you see you can I I'm sorry. Like how do you not feel something when Christopher Reeve floats down to the ground in front of you on the big screen? I I just like that moment was just like I don't when care I saw how that really the sequence was. I was like I'm there. I'm with this. When that when I saw it I was I was there. 
I was, I escaped for that moment to that, to the times of his and what could have been, but not even what could have been because they tried it. It was horrible, <laughs> but just the essence of those two Superman. And it wasn't like the, 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 the VFX were tremendous. They did all they can to make it look the way they look, but it wasn't even that it was just him. No, you're right though. The one thing, the one thing that Christopher Reeve never got the benefit of, which would have happened today is once the Donner Superman had the success that it did, there would have been in today's world, a much more hands-off approach to allow Donner to complete his trilogy. And you would have seen a more full, complete arc of how how that character was supposed to play out. Versus back then, studios were always fighting. Directors rarely did sequels, like which is how you wound up leading us to Quest for Peace and all that sort of stuff. And and so like that's the one like the, the machine of IP, right? The, the in some ways the legacy of Nolan and the legacy of Kevin Feige and things like that that hadn't taken hold yet. And so Christopher Reeve was ahead of his time in the sense that he was the embodiment of the character. But we didn't have all the trappings around him to say like i want to tell a trilogy of superman films and here's where i want to start and here's where i want to end and the same director is going to carry it all the way through mm -hmm. like that would have happened today yeah let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of all the latest with the joker 2 trailer what you thought of that um are you guys looking forward to peacemaker let me know in the comment section below i'm interested in knowing what you're looking forward to and uh, the Superman documentary for Christopher Reeve, the number one Superman. But who knows, Brian, if James Gunn got something to to usurp that position, Brian, because it's, it, 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 people have tried and, and it's just been no one, in my opinion, has come close. People have tried, but it, 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 to me, there's just still no no competition. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think, and we'll see you next time on the Nigerian Report. The show goes on! Yeah!